So we're going to start looking at adding our construction lines. Construction lines are used in SES2 to generate basic selectable points that we can use for locating exact locations in our model. For this, we're going to add an infinite construction line. Let's start by going here inside of our layout page. In the layout section, we have construction line add. Again, I can see this by hovering over this. We get a little balloon that explains the tool. It shows CA as our keyboard shortcut. We have the option to pin this, and we can look at the bottom here in our status line to see that it is calling out our construction line add. One other way we could run this is if I search up here for construction line add, we can see any construction line tools are shown. So I can run that any of those ways. I'm going to go ahead and select this. And once we did that, we can see we now have a locate page here at the top. This contextual menu will show up anytime the locate tools could be used. This is going to include all of our snaps, as well as the tools, including our toggle UCS, our XYZ location, and our X, Y, and Z offsets. So our snaps with construction lines. First, we have base construction line, and this is going to allow us to offset one construction line from another construction line that has been selected. So I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select this vertical running construction line. Looking at S1 or S2, we can see B is 25 foot off of grid A. So if I come in here, once I select my grid line to base it off of, we get a window that asks us for a dimension, a repeat factor, lock base position, and the pen color. For my dimension from construction line, I'm going to type in 25-0. That is our distance from A to B in this example from S1 or S2. We could repeat this. So right now with a repeat factor of 1, it's only going to add in one construction line. If we wanted to, we could repeat this three different times to get to B, C, and D. So I'm going to type in 3. And then looking at that lock base position, we do not want to use this tool for this example. The lock base position will always add the construction line based off of the construction line that was initially selected. For that, we could then go 20 foot zero and it'd add one 20 foot to the right of that construction line. If I type in 25 foot zero and add in another one then, that's going to add it 25 foot based off the initial one. So really only five foot to the right of the first construction line we added. So again, for this example, we are going to leave this unchecked. We could specify a color, but in this case, I'm going to leave mine navy. And I'm going to go ahead and select add. We can see it has now added three construction lines. Now I could select the red X to get out of this command. However, being that we have already added this and we didn't lock the base position, we can add in the construction line that we need for grid line E. So I'm going to type in 20 foot zero and I can add either hit an add or the add plus. So add is just going to add whatever that dimension is. So whether we typed in a negative or a positive value here, it'll go left or right. If we go add minus, that's going to send it to the left, add plus to the right, and add plus slash minus is going to do both. It's going to add it in the plus and the minus direction. As you can see in the lock base position note, it does say that it is automatic for your add plus and minus. So if we add plus and minus, we're going to add our next construction line off of that point. So in this case, I'm going to either hit add or add plus. Next, we're going to take a look at adding a finite construction line. So I'm going to go ahead and hit exit here. And as you can see, if we look at our status line here, it shows add construction line. That's telling me I am still in the command. I can either hit escape on the keyboard or right click. Either way, we'll close out of that command. So let's continue adding our construction lines for grid line 2 as well as grid line 1 and then 1.9 and 2.1. We will worry about adding 8.3 
at a later time. So continuing, we'll just select construction line add. Based off of this horizontal construction line, and we can see it's 27 foot 6. We can go a repeat factor of 2. I can hit enter. And then if we take a look, it is 20 foot from grid line 3 to 2.1, 15 to 1.9, and 20 foot. Or we can select this middle construction line, and we can go 7 foot 6, and go add plus or minus. So however you want to add that one is no issue. Next, we're going to take a look at adding a finite construction line. For this, we escape out of the command. So from our layout page here, in the layout section, we can select finite construction line add, or again, we can search that, or we can use CF on the keyboard. Once I select this, the two points I select is going to be the points that the construction line will go in between. So if I use the base construction line point locator here and base it off of one of these, well, because that is not finite, this next construction line would also not be finite. It would be infinite. If I use either my intersection of construction lines or my auto point, either one, I could come in here and select different points along that. And we can see I now have my construction line in there at that angle. So basically, it's just going to add a construction line between the points selected. So again, if I select that and rerun that, I could come in here and just select any point I wanted, and we can see it's added in there. Now let's say I didn't want to keep this line. I can edit a construction line. By going to my search, I can type in construction line edit, select that, and then it's going to ask me which construction line do I want to edit. Well, I can select that. Or if I hold down my shift key, it'll allow me, if we look at our point locator here, if we look at, if I hold down my shift key, looking at my button binding here at the bottom, we can see that now shows select plus. So I could go in and select both of those if I wanted. But in this case, I'm only going to select one. And then I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard, or I can go right click and say OK. This then brings up my construction line edit window. This allows me to select whatever construction line I want to edit. And I can do things like changing the color, unchecking finite. So maybe I want that to be red, say OK. And we can see it changed that. Another way I can go about editing these is changing my selection filter here to construction lines. And then I can just double click on that or select right click and edit. I could then go in and uncheck finite and say OK. And now we can see that is now infinite. So again, I can just single select that. I can just single select that, right click and edit, and that brings up our construction line edit as well. If I uncheck finite and say okay, we can see it's now infinite. If I check edit that and check that back on and say okay, because that was a finite construction line to begin with, we can see that it does go back to that finite state. However, if I tried that on this construction line, we can see that is grayed out. In this case, I don't want that, so we can delete this out one of two ways. To delete this, being that I have my selection filter set to construction lines, I can just select the one I don't want and hit delete on the keyboard. Or I can do construction line and, and instead of edit, I can search erase, select the one I don't want and hit enter and now we can see that has been removed. 